This is a doozy of a video, and I think a lot of you are going to be able to relate to my experience. Some of you might think this is straight up clickbait because I'm saying I have trouble with the Bible. Of course I don't have trouble with the Bible. I'm a Christian YouTuber. Well, folks, the fact is I've had a lot of trouble with the Bible, and I want to share with you a little bit of my story in hopes that you'll relate to it, and it'll actually help and benefit and grow your relationship with God. Okay, here's the deal. I grew up in a Christian household. A lot of you know this. I grew up in a Christian household. I was homeschooled. It wasn't just a nominal Christian household. No, we read the Bible. We learned about God. It was thorough. Okay, at the same time, though, for me personally, although I took in a lot of Christian teaching, sermons, podcasts, books, in terms of my actual personal study of the Bible, it wasn't that significant, okay? So I had this basic understanding of Christianity, and in some regard, I had a deeper understanding of theology than, you know, some people my age would, right? And I kind of prided myself on that. The reason was I took in these theological podcasts, and I learned about these different terminologies and things that, oh, man, maybe people didn't go deep dive in eschatology, but I was interested in that, or deep dives into transubstantiation, but, you know, I knew what that meant. And so these different things where it's like, okay, I'm educated, I'm smart, I'm a good Christian, I'm actually a kind of a super Christian in some ways, and yet... As I grew up, okay, I'd be in these different contexts where people bring theological terms or stories in the Bible as if everybody knows them, right? And other people around them, maybe this was in Bible study, would be like, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, okay. And I would be lost. I would feel like, okay, wait a minute. I've never heard of that, or I've never read that story, or I, I, I don't really know what they're talking about there. Yeah, I've heard that verse, but I don't really know what it means. And so when there would be questions, hey, does anybody know what this means? Anybody, you know, able to put more insight into this? I would be nervous and I would be anxious about it because I would feel behind. Here I am studying the Bible now as an, an, as an older person. And yet when I was a kid, I had learned about all this stuff. I had learned about these stories and these books. So these, the, and surely by now I would have a good grasp on these things. I've been exposed to all this stuff. So why now are there younger Christians than me, people that had just become Christian within the last year or so, seem to have a better grasp on the Bible than I did? Man, that was a concerning thing for me. That was really, really humbling because I felt like I was behind. Now, when I looked at reading the Bible, when I looked at opening up the Bible again, pulling out the Bible and really diving into what it had to say to me, um, it was intimidating. It was intimidating because I'd never really taken the time to learn how to study my Bible. I knew how to consume Christian content. I knew how to take in sermons and take notes on what these pastors were talking about. I knew how to listen to podcasts and, you know, mem memorize what they were saying. But at the end of the day, I, I really didn't know how to do it for myself. This was a concerning thing because at this point, I actually began to make Christian content. Believe it or not, it's true. What I became was a parrot preacher, okay? And maybe you guys are guilty of this as well. You grew up in a Christian household. You grew up in this place where, okay, I have heard these stories. I know what the right thing is to say here to this. Maybe it's an accusation against Christianity, or maybe it's a theological concept. I know the answer to this question. And yet you, you don't really know it from the Bible. You know it because you heard a sermon about it, or you know it because you listened to a podcast about it, or maybe you read a book about it but you don't really know from the source. So I became a parrot preacher. I'd make videos and I would say things and I would have conversations with people, not because I had explored the Bible for myself. I mean, somewhat so, sure. But for the most part, it was because I had heard somebody else talk about these things. So I became kind of well-respected, at least for my age, in theological, in my theological camp. You know, because people would say, oh, you know, Isaac, he really knows his stuff. Isaac knows, you know, what we believe and, and why we believe it and all this kind of thing. And they didn't realize that, hey, I hadn't really done the digging for myself. I didn't really find this out and, and come to the conclusion for myself. It was just because I was parroting what all you guys said. And, you know, to be honest, I'm really thankful that God placed me where I was because I do believe that a lot of that was very solid theology. But the truth was, is that I didn't pull that out from the Bible myself. I was just kind of an imitator. 
and to a certain degree, we're all imitators at the beginning before we really dive into the Bible. But I, the idea of doing that myself was intimidating and it was humbling because I'm like, I'm so behind. There are Christians that are younger than me that are smarter and more equipped in the Bible. How do I even catch up? There'd be context where I didn't want to admit I didn't know something about the Bible because I was nervous about being exposed. <laughs> I was nervous about being caught as a fraud. I want to give you a greater insight in my pride in this area because that's really what's halting this situation. It's not a big deal that I didn't know the Bible as well as I wanted to. I'm like, okay, that's that's tough, but get in the word. Like, humble yourself, learn. But the truth was I was prideful, and I was prideful from early on. I, I told this story before, but I was in front of my church. I would arrive early. This We're talking 30, 45 minutes before church started, and I would bring my Bible. I would usually walk to church, and I would set up. There's a little step right beside the entrance of the church, and I would open my Bible, and I would kind of pretend to read, to be honest, and I would just wait for people to cross and, and look at me. And I wanted people to think, wow, what a spiritual young man. What a great young man. What a good Christian. That's what I wanted people to see. That is how deeply entwined it was to my personality and my identity that I was a good Christian, that I knew my stuff. Okay, but it reminds me actually of a, a verse from Matthew 6, 5. And it says this. It says, and when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. That was me. I wanted to be seen by others. I wanted to be seen as, as a good Christian. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, I'm struggling with all sorts of sin, all sorts of lust, all sorts of pride, but I wanted to be seen by others as a, as a good Christian. So this idea of humbling myself is submitting to God and saying, I God, I don't know your word as much as I thought I did. That was very intimidating for me. Maybe you found yourself in this similar place. Even in this moment, you portray yourself to be a lot more theologically astute than you are. Or maybe you claim that you have a much deeper relationship with God than you actually do. Maybe you know a lot about God, but your personal time with him is lackluster, if existent at all. I've been there. Okay. The key is, am I going to admit my sin that I have sinned here. This is straight up sin, guys. It is. And I had to admit that. Like, I'm portraying myself to be something that I'm not. And I'm holding on to this pride, my pride so tightly. And my insecurity so tightly that I won't actually develop a real relationship with God. So what did I have to do? Well, it reminds me of a story. It was a tax collector. Went up to pray along with his Pharisee. And the Pharisee said, God, thank you that I'm not like other men. Thank you that I'm this wonderful, amazing Pharisee. And I, and I cling to your law and I meditate on your law and I do all these things. Thank you that I'm not like this tax collector and all these other sinners, right? And in some regard, I was this guy, right? I'm like, God, thank you that I'm not like these other people. And I was pretending to be something that I, I really wasn't, right? And this tax collector came and he just didn't hold his head towards heaven like the Pharisee did. He, he put his head towards just the ground and in submission and humility and say, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. To me, this is where we begin if we want to know God, not just in terms of his word, but in prayer, but in every aspect of life. If we want to know God, we have to be willing to say, God, have mercy on me, a sinner, to humble ourselves. This is the hardest thing for me. And it is continually the hardest thing for me because I want control. I want to portray myself as something that Someone that's sufficient, that's wise, that's knowledgeable, even having this YouTube channel, that is a constant temptation to say, guys, hey, I got this together. I'm the smart one. I know theology. I know how to get close to God. Meanwhile, I'm struggling to read my Bible. Meanwhile, I'm struggling to pray. Meanwhile, like, okay, let me lay this down. Let me be real for a second and say, hey, guys, this is hard for me. This is really hard for me. But one thing I have learned is that humility is the path to knowing God. Humility is the path to knowing God. If we want a real relationship with him, if we want an authentic relationship with him, then who cares how we present our relationship to God to other people? Hey, guys, oh, yeah, I'm part of the Bible study. I'm part of the, the church group. I love God. God, God and me are tight. Meanwhile, we go home. We're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. Haven't picked up our Bible. Don't really think to pray unless something really traumatic is going on in her life and we're really desperate, then I'm going to pray. But otherwise, I'm going to leave God to the side. Man, guys, humility is where it has to be. One last piece for you as you leave. Don't fall in to the Christian creator consuming 
trap, okay? We can get in this trap of always consuming and consuming and consuming Christian content, okay? I've been there. Podcasts, YouTube videos, sermons, like, and a lot of good stuff. I'm not saying it's bad. That's what I do for my work, right? That's my mission in life is to create Christian content for you to take in, for you to grow, hopefully, closer to God. And yet, we need to know that those things are not a replacement for our relationship with God. You can know about God. You can watch videos about God. You can study about God. But if you don't know God, then what's the point? How do we know God? Guys, getting back to the simplicity, reading the word, saying, humbling ourselves, saying, God, I don't really know how to do this, but I'm going to read this first. I'm going to get insight from other people how to understand these things that are going on in your word. I'm, I'm going to pray. I'm going to focus on the simplicity of just knowing God and being with him. That's where we begin. Okay. You can get so consumed and consuming all these things about God. But for me at this point, my mission for you is that you would know God and not just know about him. Okay. <sighs> do I have trouble with the Bible? <laughs> Man, I have trouble with obeying the Bible. I have trouble with reading the Bible sometimes, but Hopefully, I'm getting this place of continually humbling myself, not being scared of it, not seeing it as something that I need to be anxious about, but just something that God has given me as a gift so I can meditate on it and learn from it because that's what he wants me to do. That's the beauty of it. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I'd ask you to subscribe and, you know, because we're putting out videos all the time. I, I got videos coming out all the time that are hopefully designed and will encourage you to follow Jesus daily. If you want to support what I'm doing, and support my family, that would be an awesome thing. Uh, click the link in my description and sign up for Patreon today. You can also give a one-time donation on PayPal. This ministry is completely funded and supported by you guys, you watching this video. Uh, that's how I can provide for my family and continue to make this content that I'm so passionate about. So it would be a wonderful thing if you could support me. Anyway, if you can't, just keep watching the videos. It's a pleasure to be with you and be able to impart what I'm learning to your life. It's a blessing. Until next time, God bless.